you say this refers to the whole population, this is a perfect number, this is just a rough estimate. But by introducing a rough estimate into the, into the, pop, into the formula, we're introducing more uncertainty. If we want to, but we still want to be 80% or whatever, 90% or whatever percentage is called for. So in order to maintain our degree of certainty in the presence of increased uncertainty, well, how can you deal with that? Make the interval bigger. By making the interval bigger, you're basically giving yourself some more, some more insurance and more, more confidence. So, so, so how can you do that? Well, without getting too complicated, all you've got to do is you go to the T table, which automatically figures out the amount of stretching that you're supposed to use when you introduce the standard deviation of the sample. So the formula that we're going to be focusing on the rest of the chapter is going to be, instead of going to the Z table, you turn to the page after that called the T table and plug it in to get your answer. But the T table has one additional complication. In some ways, it's easier to use than the Z table. One other way is harder to use. Would you be more confident that this number here is a good substitute for this number if the sample was large or the sample is small? You be more kind of, is this going to be a good estimate of sigma when the sample is large or the sample is small? Larger. With a large sample, you're going to get a better estimate. So therefore, when you have a really, really large sample size, this number here is practically the same number as this number over here. And therefore, the amount of stretching that the T should introduce should be a relatively small amount of stretching. Conversely, if the sample size is small, this number might be very far from this number. So when you plug it in, you may be off by a lot. You really got to give yourself a lot of insurance. So what if that boils down to is when the sample size is small, you got to give a lot of stretching, and when the sample size is big, you give yourself a small amount of stretching. Um, and therefore, when you look up the teeth formula, it's not a single number, it depends upon the sample size. There's one number for every, every sample size. And for technical reasons, in particular, of course, the formula for the standard deviation has an n minus 1 on the bottom of it. We don't look up the sample size directly, we look up the sample size minus 1, just a technicality. Now we call that the degree of freedom. VF refers to degree of freedom equals n minus 1. So now let's take it from the very top. Let's redo the whole example, but this time not doing it by the T table, doing it by the Z table. So that, that requires two important changes. First of all, you can't simply plug it blindly 2.87. Everybody who picked five numbers, which hopefully the 10 people you know, were just erased, picked in honestly picked 10 random, five random numbers, take those five random numbers and plug them back into the formula that you were supposed to practice as part of chapter three and get the standard deviation. And if you did it correctly, and if your sample is somewhat reasonable, the answer should come out to pretty close to 2.87. That is the true value for the standard deviation. It might be 3.11, 3.41, 2.17, and we should be in a ballpark of 2.87. And then take that number and plug it in here. The five, n is still five. The averages, whatever the five numbers happen to be before, the same five numbers, the same average. But this time you go to the T table. Now let's just do it together. This number will be the same for everybody in the class. In order to figure out the T number, and the T is very similar to a Z, it's still a bell-shaped curve more or less, except now it's going to be called T as opposed to Z. The middle value is still zero. The spread, before the spread for the Z was one. But now it's going to be a little bit bigger than one because it's more, stre it's more stretched out. And it doesn't make a difference. Leave a blank. Don't put a one here, but don't put anything there. So we want two vertical lines. So spinner assignment number, I think number 13, is asking you to figure out, again, an 80% confidence interval for this, this type of data. And if it's 80%, means 80% goes in the middle, that means 10% goes over here. But for some reason, which I don't fully understand, the T table has this, the, the picture on the right side of the picture. So the 10% that you care about goes over here. Right? So 1 minus 80 divided by 2. Of course, if 80% in the middle, we're missing 20%, but there are two of them, so you divide it by two, so 10% on each side. We'll just see it by the picture if you can. And finally, the degree of freedom for this particular example, spinner assignment 13, where the, where the sample size is five, is n minus one or five minus one or four. So for those who happen to have the T table with you, which I asked you to bring, please, uh, maybe it is, whatever, please bring in the future, look up the four degrees of freedom, the 10% column, remember again, we're looking at the 10% column in the T-table, and where it meets row number four, which is why it's easier than the Z, just go to it directly. Yes, Paul? 1.53. So one point, here, you mean the four decimal places? 1.53332. Three decimals. That's it. That, that, so when it comes time to do, this is going to be a five when you finish up this example in a couple of seconds. This is going to be a 1.5332. This is going to be whatever your five numbers give you, and this will also be whatever your five, everybody's going to be getting different answers. Do you want us to pick five new numbers for this? 
Well, in order to do this in class, in order to do it legitimately, you really should be picking five random numbers. Well, you have random numbers, put your finger down and grab five numbers. I mean, I'm saying, do we pick five different ones? Pick one five different ones. We are the same number sheet. 11. I'm not sure what I told you on the sheet. Sometimes it tells you the same, sometimes it's different. <laughs> different numbers. So pick five different numbers on the machine. So just pick another five numbers. So those of you who have a book in front of you, pick five numbers right now. For those of you who have the formula, know how to use the formula, calculate the standard deviation, because everybody calculates the average in front of that. And then look, make sure you can look up the 1.5332 and give me an answer. And we'll spend a couple of minutes. Uh, um, trying so this take, we'll take a, this does, this doesn't take three seconds. It might take a good minute or two till you pick the five numbers, till you calculate the standard deviation, till you plug it into the formula, 